Hey gang, it's Chad. Welcome back to the channel. It's time to fix another broken old system. This time it's a Japanese Sega Saturn. It doesn't read games, it forgets the time, and it loses game save data. Let's fix these problems using modern solutions. The Sega Saturn was a home video game console developed by Sega and was released in 1995. The Sega Saturn recently celebrated its 25th birthday. A few weird, unique, and interesting characteristics of this machine are that it has not one, but two CPUs that work together in a symmetrical multi-processing configuration. Two video display processors, or VDPs, also worked in tandem through a transparency layer. While one VDP was a sprite shifting, rotating, and scaling 2D powerhouse, and the other can produce anti-aliased three-dimensional backgrounds and more. I received this Sega Saturn with the understanding that the disk drive does not work, and for a system with all of its software on CDs, this is a real problem. This system's lifespan ended almost 20 years ago, and locating new laser assemblies is becoming more and more difficult. A device has been created, however, to solve this problem, called an Optical Disk Emulator, or an ODE for short. While I'm at it, I'll address another common problem that Sega Saturn owners know all too well. That's losing your progress in a game save because the backup battery has lost its charge. It was also a complete failure to launch in North America. But it did well in Japan. <laughs> So I'll be performing a modification known as the Saturn FRAM mod. In it, I will replace the Saturn's battery-backed SRAM chip with a non-volatile FRAM chip. Well, what's the deal with FRAM? For starters, it can retain its data for many years without power. This type of memory, however, is slower and it costs more. It also has a limited number of cycles. None of this really matters. I've got the main board out and we're looking at the section where the memory is located. I'll prepare the area by using caption tape. This is to reflect some of the heat from my hot air gun away from the components that we want to keep on the board. I'll use something called chip quick which is lower melting point solder that will make it easier for me to remove the chip. I have the heat set at 385 and the air is at full speed while being mindful to not stay in one spot for too long. I gently nudge the chip until I see it come off and then I'll use my tweezers to remove the old chip so I don't burn my fingers. Let's spend some time cleaning up around the area. Next, I'll douse the area with IPA and place a chem wipe over the top and brush the chem wipe. I'll use a pair of tweezers here to carefully place the chip back in place and then tack two corners down. The new chip needs a slight wiring modification. I'll need to lift two pins. They are pins 22 and 28. With the sides anchored in and a steady hand, I carefully lift the two legs using tweezers and then solder down the rest of the legs. Pin 28 needs to be connected to 5 volts, which is handily available from a nearby surface mounted capacitor. Pin 28 
pin 22 needs to be connected to the ground. I'll use some thin gauge wire here to make the connection. After that, I clean up the board using IPA, a chem wipe, and the brush again. Now, let's test each connection using a multimeter. I touch the top leg of the chip here, and then to the pad that it should be soldered to. I should not get a beep whenever I check legs 22 and 28 to the respective pads. Now it's time to put it back together. As mentioned earlier, I've still got more work to do. I'm installing the Fenrir Duo. The installation is incredibly simple. No soldering is required. Simply remove the old laser assembly and connect the data ribbon and power cables. Okay, now that I've reassembled the device, I can insert the final piece, an SD card with all the games that I never got to play on this original piece of hardware that went from a piece of trash into an absolute treasure. Well, that's all for now, folks. Thanks so much for watching. I'll leave you with some RGB captured goodness to enjoy. Tune in to CrossGen Gameplay's YouTube channel to see more of this amazing little machine 